Today we're going to discuss who this man is, why is he signing a sheet of dollar bills, and in fact they are gold-backed dollar bills, treasury notes, non-federal reserve. And in fact on 11 March 2014 he signed new currencies to all the countries of the world. Non-federal reserve, private bank, treasury notes for the US. And we'll discuss how it ties into this document that you see before you. This document is the Green Hilton Memorial Agreement. The agreement that was signed by John F. Kennedy that got him killed in the 60s. It was signed by John F. Kennedy as you can see there. A gentleman by the name of Socorno, which is the father of the gentleman that you just seen in that photo signing the cash. And also by William Walker, the of Union Bank of Switzerland. This is the document that actually got John F. Kennedy killed and Socorno removed from power. Here's another page of the document showing what this document was about. It was about the allocation of gold certificates to JFK in order to try to take the power back away from the Federal Reserve that was out of control. And we're going to get into the history of how those things were created and what the purpose of, of the Federal Reserve as well as the World Bank and so on. Why they were created originally and what happened. As you can see here on this document dated August 6, 1966, there were thousands of kilograms of gold certificates that were being issued to the United States in order to try to take the Federal Reserve out of power. However, as you know, JFK was killed 11 days after this document was signed. Very few people have actually seen this document. I gained this document out of Indonesia, which I'll explain more. As you can see here, all the uh, witnesses as well as the signees of this document at that time in 1966. So the gentleman that you've seen signing the document a minute ago, or signing the money, his name is Mr. Sugai. He is the son of this man that you see with JFK, Socorno. And who is he? What was he? Well, you have to understand the history of money and how it was originally created and the, the details thereof. You see, Mr. Socorno had a grand plan with JFK to try to free humanity. And as you know, shortly after this photo was taken, JFK was killed and Socorno was run out of power. It took almost the killing of one million people in Indonesia in order to make that happen. The information in this video is information that you will not read in your history books. You will not be told by most anyone because this information has been hidden from the world and from you. This man, Bobby Kennedy, was also killed, assassinated, because of his involvement with trying to free humanity. But the good news is, is that it has happened again. On March 11th, 2014, it went into play again. Humanity is going to be free, is going to see everything that has, has been corrupt and evil and criminal in our governments. We're going to see it go away. So let me go more into the story with you. It starts with King Solomon in Jerusalem around 930 BC, a very successful king who amasses huge wealth, especially gold. You've heard of King Solomon's mines, King Solomon's gold. Well, you assume that it was actually in Israel, and it was, but currently it now exists in Indonesia, along with nine-tenths of the world's gold is in Indonesia, buried underground, hidden away. Considering that he knew that his country was going to fall apart after his death, he selects one of his most trusted wives, Queen Sheba, to protect the assets and the bloodline and traditions. Sometime after, which after his death, she leaves with everything back to where she probably came from, Jawa. Jawa is Indonesia. There she established the courts of what later become known as Solo 
after Solomon, Solo Jawa. The safeguarding of the gold assets, King Solomon's bloodline, and religious traditions of his court. The gold pile grows. There are huge flows of gold into Indonesia from China during the 1300 AD. China almost goes broke buying spices and wood. From Europe in the 1400 to 1600 AD, most of the gold taken from South America ends up in Indonesia for payment for spices, which are the most sought after goods in the world at that time. Now I'm going to jump ahead a few pages in the essence of time, but I will make this entire document available for you to study. I'm going to tell you and show you exactly how and who the gentleman signing the dollars was and so who Sukorno was and how he became to be. It's called the Illuminati breeding program. Leg Legends of a shadow power behind the scenes called the Illuminati has long flourished in the West. This may be how it started. 1200 to 1300 AD Queen Royal Kaidu uh, or however you pronounce it, a beautiful illuminated being. She literally shines up a room and never grows old. Marries the king of Solo she promises to always protect the kingdom and return when needed. Her descendants takes the name of Chakra Ningrat, the Illuminated. 1300-1700 AD, royals marry royals and none other. The Jawa bloodline was important and Chinese, European, and Middle Eastern royals all intermarry. In 1700, all major wars are basically between close or distant royal family members. They all they are all related one one way or another. They fight over land and wealth with the advanced advancing technology war gets more and more destructive and in an enlightened moment some agree to try to systematically do something about it. So as you can see there are sixty four families Asian, European, Middle Eastern, and Chinese. They all start to interbreed to try to do something systematically about it. The many wars in Europe was a very good reason to stop family interfighting and around 1750 128 of those world's most important royals agreed to a breeding plan. They, they married or had kids following a system having their respective first son or daughter marry or mate according to the same plan. Objective, create the king of kings, the enlightened one, a person who would equally represent each and every one of the participating 128 royal families of the world. So as you can see how the chart continues, 64, 32, 16, 8. Over the course of seven generations, they slowly bring down the numbers of participating families, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, and then one. Finally in the year 1900 AD the one is born. That was Mr. Sukorno, the one that you've seen with uh, JFK, the one that tried to take the Federal Reserve out previously. Now they have one person who can say who can honestly say I represent all of you. Let's call him M1 short for Monetary One because he holds control of all the gold from King Solomon and all the gold from around the world. With M1 in existence, it is time to move on to the next step in the plan. In 1920 to 21, they start to consolidate, call back their combined wealth with the intention of placing it in the hands of M1, Mr. Sukorno. M1 is then to redistribute the combined wealth of the world according to an agreed upon plan. Nine of the most prominent royal families representing different regions of the world were driving this project together with the Chinese royal KS. One of the most active and respected among them were PBX, uh, Pak Binu, M1's biological father and the, and the king of Solo from the Chakra Nagret or the illuminated Solomon bloodline. So in 1928 PB X calls a meeting to Solo, Jawa, Indonesia, for all the 128 families to attend. 
Here they sign a POA transferring all their combined assets into the hands of M1, Socorno. He is then supposed to distribute the wealth according to an agreed upon plan, the plan of the experts. How it was supposed to work. If you have all the money in the world and you want to make that a better and more equal world, how would you go about it? This is a serious question. The people face faced with this problem opportunity planned it along these lines all with good intentions first collected into one big pot Indonesia and the surrounding islands in the, in the uh, South Asian Pacific down, uh, down there set someone you uh, trust in charge but have checks and balances in place one of the primary objectives was to free the nations from colonialism that means the crown basically these new nations should be governed by guided uh, democracies. So up on top of the world pyramid, there should be a forum where everyone, every nation has a voice and a vote. And that's how the UN got created. Originally, that was the original purpose. When ready, M1 should transfer the power of that world government body. Uh, it was called the United Nations. All these new and old independent nations needed financing to supply that and track all major fund movements. You can you need a central bank to to uh, to to all central banks, and that was uh, the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland was planned to be set up for that purpose to give everybody access to the best and brightest regarding infrastructure and financing. The World Bank was incorporated. The World Bank's job is to employ the best in their fields who then plan projects and infrastructure solutions around the world. They will also finance projects that can meet normal commercial bank requirements. They also approve cash utilizations from the Fed and other banks. Your project needs a World Bank approval to get financed. To feed the private side of the world finance with cash you need an outlet. The Fed were taken uh, into this role. The Federal Reserve is what we're talking about, guys. Um, uh, it, w it was to be the cash cow of the world on the private side of banking. They were to supply all prime banks with funding, the top 25 around the world, not just America, but all others. Here is where it started to all go wrong. The Fed became a political tool to push power agendas. Its owners eventually hijacked the whole system. So you see, Socorno and Kennedy recognized this in the 60s, and they wanted to stop it because the Federal Reserve had started printing money without having gold back certificates, you know, monetative easing, and they wanted to stop it, and they attempted it in the 60s, and of course we know the result of what happened to Kennedy. What happened to Socorno was that in Indonesia, the CIA decided they wanted to, of course, take him out of power as well. So they put together a coup, you might say, and they killed approximately somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million Indonesians, Indonesians in the 60s, 65, 66, right in that range. And uh, they blamed it using propaganda on Socorno. And Socorno was then put on house arrest for the rest of his life. And Kennedy was murdered. And now, on March 11th, 2014, an agreement has been made again that the dollar, the U.S. dollar, and all currencies of the world will go back to gold back dollars. Non Federal Reserve Treasury notes in the U.S. Not only that, all Federal Reserve debt is going to be wiped out. There is a video exists of this. Uh, event taking place which I've seen the complete video of them signing all the currencies of the world and put the, putting this into action so how am I privy to all this information it's because for the last year and a half I've been investigating and following this and have at, been asked to set on a council of 120 individuals on five continents around the world and I sit on that council and assist Mr. Sugai in the rollout of this plan.
to finally, once and for all, to free humanity of debt and enslavement.